SS Strength and Conditioning presents the Basketball Playlist. This is a 12-month basketball training program. The competitive basketball season may only last six to seven months, but a basketball training program stretches the full year. Most players forget that what they do in the off-season plays a crucial role in how the season plays out. The off-season is two to three months, the preseason is three to four months, and the in-season phase is six months. Even if you only have two days a week aside from your games, you can still benefit greatly by splitting each year up in this periodized way. Spend two to three days per week doing some kind of low intensity cardiovascular exercise in the off season. Avoid running and avoid playing basketball, even recreationally, for at least a few weeks. This is an ideal time to try your hand at a new sport, swimming, cycling, or racket sports. This is called cross training. There is no need to monitor heart rate, but if you must, keep to a zone of 65-75% to 75 of your maximum heart rate. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is around a level 7. For your strength conditioning, you can take several weeks off, but it, but it is good if you do some functional strength. Functional strength is muscular endurance. It stabilizes muscle groups that may have been neglected during the season. A good deal of your time in this phase should be spent on core stability. Loads are typically light, 50 to 60% of your one rep max, and repetitions are higher, 15 and above. For your flexibility, losses in range of motion and movement occur incredibly quickly if you don't actively stretch on a regular basis. Perform stretching exercises daily or at least three times a week. Be sure to warm up thoroughly first. There is no need to do any speed agility at this time. Next, we move on to the early preseason. In the early preseason, we will move more towards aerobic conditioning. Focus on continuous type training. However, the lower intensity aerobic conditioning will gradually begin to move into more intensive interval type training. Jogging is preferable to swimming or cycling at this stage. Sessions should last between 30 and 45 minutes with heart rate between 75 to 80 percent of your maximum. For your strength training, towards the end of this phase we will move on to begin a maximal strength program. Focus on compound movements like squats, leg presses, the bench press, deadlifts, and the shoulder press. Remember, this is at the end of this phase. Lift heavier weights when we get here, around 90-95% to 95 of your one rep max for fewer repetitions. Three sessions is adequate and avoid strength training on consecutive days. This is building maximal strength. However, right now, you should still be doing muscular endurance. For your flexibility, you should be maintaining it throughout the season. In the mid and late preseason, you will begin to do anaerobic conditioning. This will be when we move away from general aerobic conditioning and towards more basketball specific sessions. Basketball is a moldy sprint pro sport. In the game, you'll be required to perform several successive sprints close to maximum speed. Your body quickly begins to accumulate lactic acid as a result. Your ability to recover from this buildup can have an enormous impact on your performance. Shuttle runs are a classic example and very effective of anaerobic training. However, the many more will be shown to you later on in the playlist. Two to three sessions a week lasting 30 minutes are required to reach peak fitness in time for the start of the competitive season at this stage. Your strength and power conditioning. It can take up to three months to develop maximum strength, so continue maximal strength training into the late preseason. About four weeks prior to the start of the season, you'll want to exchange some or all of your strength sessions for plyometric training. Plyometric 
or jump training is one of the most effective methods for developing explosive power. And because power is a product of both speed of contraction and strength, your groundwork in the weights weight room will pay dividends here. Plyometric training has been shown to be one of the most effective methods for building explosive power. For this training to be effective, it needs to follow a phase of maximal strength, strength training. Its purpose is to improve on athletes' ability and capacity to apply more force rapidly. Hence, the greater ability to apply maximal strength, then the more of it can be converted into sport-specific power. Plyometric volume refers to reps per session. This can be counted as ground contact for the lower body exercises. Beginners should aim for 80 to 100 reps, intermediate levels for 100 to 120 reps, and the advanced level from 120 to 140 reps. Typically, two to three sessions can be completed per week. The rest between your plyometric sessions should be 48 to 72 hours. Your rest between sets should be 5 to 7 minutes. The speed is explosive and rhythmical. These exercises will be shown to you later. Within this phase, you should also be completing agility training, agility and speed. This will also be shown th to you later in the form of some exercises. Next we move on into the in-season phase. In this phase. In this phase, the goal is to maintain what you've developed during the preseason. You need to find a balance of strength training and power training. For example, three weight sessions and two plyometric sessions is a good model to follow. Similarly, two anaerobic endurance sessions is ample, especially as a game counts as another one. You can perform some speed and agility drills two days a week as well. If you focus on form and keep them undemanding physically, you can tab them onto the start of other training sessions. The plan shown to you in this image shows you how this all fits together with a calendar. Thank you for listening and look forward to making your own program with this periodization and my tutorials on how to complete your exercises. And let's get in shape for basketball season.